When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. What we're going to do in this video is cover the stop point. It says identify neutralization as a proton transfer reaction which is exothermic. So it's two parts we have to identify, which means we just have to realize. We have to realize that a neutralization reaction is all to do with proton transfer. And also, we should realize that it's exothermic. So those are the two things we should do in this video. So first what I'll do, I'll talk about what happens when we have a strong acid reacting with a strong base. Remember from the last video, or two videos back, if we have a strong acid and a strong base coming together, we form a salt and water. And overall, that's where a neutralization reaction is. We have, in this case, we have hydrogen from here, which would usually make things acidic, and we have an hydroxide here, which would usually make things basic. What happens is this here is transferred, this proton is transferred, because an acid is a proton donor, so this proton is transferred from the acid to the hydroxide and thereby creating water. So water is the end product. So if this were in the actual solution it would make things acidic. If this were in the solution it would make things basic. But because we have neutralized it, it's just what it's water itself and water itself has no pH, it's, it's neutral. So it has neutral pH. And that's what we mean by proton transfer when it comes to neutralization. So strong acid and strong base coming together making salt and water, that's neutralization reaction. And you can see there the proton transfer from the actual hydrogen of the hydrochloric acid to the hydroxide group of the sodium hydroxide. And that makes water and a salt. And here we've had a proton transfer. Now the other part is it says it's exothermic. Now if you remember, this is delta H and delta H is minus, and delta H being minus means it's exothermic. So whenever we have a base and a, a base and acid come together in a neutralization reaction, the actual reaction itself is exothermic, which means it gives off energy. So what that means, if you, you can imagine here we have these blue dots and these red dots, when they come together, so blue is meant to be the base, the base. Uh, blue is meant to be the base, and red is meant to be the acid. When they come together, we have energy being released. So when salt and water is being formed, we have energy being released. That's what that means. It's exothermic. So whenever they come together, there's energy being released. Now obviously that means that because, I mean, it's for this reaction, when we have a strong acid and strong base, it's 57.3 uh, kilojoule per mole being released in terms of energy. So that's a decent amount. So if you can imagine if we have very concentrated strong acids and strong bases, so this would be the concentrated version, that means there's going to be a lot of reaction happening and there's going to be a lot of energy being released. So this would boil really quickly. Right? So it'd be, it would come, come to a boil really quickly and that would be, might be dangerous. So overall, when we have neutralization reactions, we don't tend to use very concentrated versions. We use more of the dilute version. right? So this is more of what we would actually use. This is the dilute version which means we have just less base and, and acid molecules. And that means there's still going to be energy being released when these blue and the red ones meet. And per mole, it will be the same amount. So per mole, it's always 57.3. But in the case of dilute, it just means there's less moles, which means less energy being released when they meet. And it's safer. So this we do this because it's safer. So when you use when you do neutralization reactions in your school lab, you're not going to be using very concentrated acids and bases. So you're going to be using quite dilute acids and bases. And another example I give, this was strong acid and strong base, and they release about 50, minus 57.3 kilojoule per mole. Whereas if we have a weak acid and a strong base, the same reaction happens. It's still, still a transfer of proton. So in this case, we have this hydrogen here from the acid, and we have the same hydroxide group from the base. They will come together and form water. Right? So when those two come together, also that's not 
OH is OH minus. When those come together, we form H2O, which we can find in the actual products. So here we have it neutralized. We have no hydrogen or no hydroxide, or very few, very few actually, because it's going to be a reversible reaction, so you're going to see slight amounts of hydroxides and for the other ones still in solution. But overall, most of it has been neutralized. Neutral, and that is a neutralization reaction. Now the interesting part is, it still releases energy just like the other one, but it releases a tiny bit less, so minus 56.1 kilojoule per mole, as opposed to minus 57.3 kilojoules. So it's only a tiny difference, but there's a bit of a difference. And the reason why is if you can imagine if these here come together, right? so if the blue, which is meant to be our base, so the blue here is our base, and the gray here is meant to be our ethanoic acid, when they come together, you will have, I'm just going to show you how they come together. So they come together, and then the products are being formed. So the products would then be H2O and this molecule here, or this ion here. So I'm just going to draw them using this color. So I'm going to use purple for the iron, and I'm just going to use yellow for the water. So when that happens, we have energy being released, right? That's because that's a neutralization reaction. When, when those change into the new products, we have energy being released. The reason why it's a tiny bit less energy being released is because it's a reversible reaction, right? A reversible reaction. So if it goes this way, we have energy being released, so energy released in the forward reaction, but in the reverse reaction, we have energy being absorbed. And in this case, most of them will be here, so most of them will have energy being released, but some of them will go back to their original state. And when they do, they absorb a bit of energy. So you know, maybe this one might then go back. So it was it popped into the purple and the yellow, so into the products, but then it might go back and it will pop back into the original molecules. And by doing so, it will reabsorb that energy. It doesn't happen to many of them, it only happens to a few of them, but those few are enough to tiny make a tiny bit of a difference when it comes to the extra energy being released. Right? So, uh, but yeah, it's not really so important for you to know, just, I just wanted to give you a bit of a conceptual understanding, but I'll go over the main points again. Identify neutralization as a proton transfer reaction, which is exothermic. So we've talked about that we have, it doesn't matter if it's strong acid and strong base, or a weak acid and strong base, in both cases we have the hydrogen coming together with a hydroxide group, which means when they come together, we have water being formed, and that is a proton transfer. So we have the transfer of proton from an acid to the hydroxide of the base, and thereby forming water, so you can see the proton transfer. The other part was that they're all exothermic, which means they release energy in the forward reaction. Now that's going to be releasing about 57.3 kilojoule per mole in a strong acid, strong base scenario, and about 56.1 kilojoule per mole in a weak acid and strong base scenario. Don't have to remember, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have to remember those values. What you do have to remember is that it's exothermic. That's what the dot point says. Since you remember that's exothermic, that releases heat. And obviously, again, the implications of that is if it releases heat, we want to make sure we use a dilute acids and bases. When we neutralize, not concentrate it, because if we use concentrated, we're gonna we're gonna produce way too much heat, and that's it's gonna go to a boil really quickly, and that's a safety concern. So whenever we do neutralization reactions, which we've done with your titration, for example, we tend to use dilute solutions, not concentrate solutions. But yeah, I mean those are the, the main parts of that top point. Thank you for watching.